took on war that shocked the world with its use of chemical weapons. A conflict that threatened Western oil interests dragging in the superpowers to protect them and prevent either side claiming victory. A war without material gain, yet one where Iraq could claim victory and pursue reward by seizing the weight of bringing the world to the edge of another conflict. For 50 years, Iraq's central worries had been the vulnerability of its oil fields and its need to cross other countries' land to find its oil because of its own narrow access to the Gulf. In an expansionist adventure, Iraq aimed to establish itself as a Gulf power by neutralizing its closest rival, Iran. Iraq invaded Iran in seven areas, in the north to protect its own northern oil fields and to cut the strategic road to Tehran while protecting Baghdad. In the center, to cut communications between northern and southern Iraq and in the south, to grab the strategic towns in the Iranian oil fields. The Khuzestan landscape favored invaders using tanks and armored vehicles, making it easy to drive deeply into Iran. With a five to one superiority and facing only one depleted Iranian armored division, Iraqi forces moved quickly despite lacking air cover. Often using tanks as artillery, they softened up distant targets with heavy barrages as troops moved into more local objectives. The Iraqi Soviet made anti tank gunships found few targets scouting planes rapidly being pocketed by dugouts and then trenched artillery. The Iraqis had already proved these tactics against Kurdish rebels, but their strategy failed to recognize that defensive armies could also move quickly into position. Away from the Kurdish mountains, large armies could become clear targets for Iranian heavy artillery. Yet within three days, the Iraqis were laying siege to these strategic cities of Desbul, Akhbaz, and Koramshah. They had failed to realize that the tactics which proved successful against mountain guerrillas would have less impact against large towns and cities able to defy encirclement. But oil was already a major objective. And though determined to take over Iran's production capacity, Iraq was prepared first to smash it. The effect of the fighting was to close the Shat al Arab waterway to all shipping. It would be eight years before any of these ships would be free to move again, making Iraq dependent on others, notably Kuwait, for transporting its oil. In the frontline cities, Iranian troops hurried to engage the invaders. Local resistance was led by Iran's revolutionary guards, who were fiercely loyal to Ayatollah Khomeini. They relied heavily on rifles and rocket-propelled grenades, and in sporadic engagements, exacted a heavy toll of the invading forces. From their example stemmed the Iranian mood of self-sacrifice in a holy war. The Iraqis crossed the Karan River near Karamshah and advanced on the oil town of Abadan, a top Iraqi target. It was seen as the gateway to the Gulf and the Iraqis deployed 60,000 troops and 1,000 tanks against its 10,000 defenders. But its preoccupation with taking Abadan distracted Iraq from easier military options. Generally speaking, Iraq's president, Saddam Hussein, overrated his troops' abilities. They were capable of quickly achieving one limited objective, but he set them too many, failing to choose between taking Koran Shah, Abadan, Akbar, or Desbor. By pursuing all at once, he lost time as well as the advantage of surprise. Only Koran Shah fell. Meanwhile, his losses mounted, and the devastation of border areas continued as the big guns honed in on the towns like Akbaz 